Welcome to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host, John Barker, representative from the 70th District. And John's guest in the middle between us is Dan Hawkins, House Majority Leader, and from Wichita, 100th yep. District. And you guys, um, this is our second filming. The first one was before the legislature started meeting. And so, John, this is the first one of 2021. Right. And uh, it's Friday, so you guys have just come in finishing with the legislature for a week. And I know when you came in, you told me, I said, man, we feel like we have been there for a month. Uh, There's true. There's a lot going on. There, there, there has been a lot going on this week. You know, we, we're trying to, to stay safe. Uh, so we, we wear our mask. We try to social distance. Of course, uh, the leadership has put us in the chamber where we're six feet apart. So it's every other seat. I think we have 33 members on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then we use both balconies, the east and the west balconies, to put members in. And we're not going in the chamber that often. But we did have to go on uh, Monday. We went in 10 at a time uh, to be sworn in. Uh, we started at 2. Uh, I didn't get sworn in until 3.20. And I, I, don't, I don't think they completed it till about four o'clock. Uh, and then we did go in uh, in the chamber, but we had the people all separated. Did a little business, uh, passed our temporary rules and, and some different things. But uh, yeah, it's been, it, it, it's been just different. Uh, on Tuesday morning, I had my first committee meeting. Uh, as you know, I chair Fed and State. Had several uh, bills introduced. I in introduced a constitutional amendment, House Concurrent Resolution 5003, uh, which is a uh, constitutional amendment on abortion. Value them both. Uh, as we've talked about in the past, you know, in 2019, the Kansas Supreme Court found that there was a constitutional right to an abortion, and it has a strict scrutiny finding, which means all of our regulations like parent consent and this type of thing could go out the window. So we brought this up last year. Of course, last year was we had to end early because of COVID-19. So I introduced it on, uh, on Tuesday at our first meeting. Uh, and then we had an actual hearing on it today because uh, we don't know how long we're going to be there. You know, if uh, Dan could talk about Missouri just closed their uh, legislative body down because of COVID-19. And they would have just opened also when they... Mm -hmm. uh, and they just opened. So uh, we had the hearing today. Uh, I would expect next week we'll probably uh, work the bill and get it out to the floor. I know Dan's got a timetable for a lot of these things. But we've been bu busy. Uh, I guess the other thing in my life was uh, the speaker appointed me to the uh, special uh, or select investigative committee, a number of... Uh, the Democrat representatives have filed a complaint against one of their Democrat representatives, or at least was a Democrat representative at the time they filed the complaint. He has now since uh, changed parties and became a independent. Uh, so under our rule, and I'll have to look at it here, I've been looking at it all day, it's a House Rule 4902. Uh, we've got to do an inquiry and a hearing. So next week, we're probably going to have that maybe on Friday. Um, uh, the Democrats appoint three members to the committee. The Republicans have three mem members to the committee. I chair the committee. Uh, we would like to get this resolved uh, as quick as possible. So, yeah, it, next week's going to be like this week. And and you're right. We've been there a week, and Dan and I were talking coming in, said so we feel like we've been there a month. Yeah, it does. Yeah. There's a lot going on, a lot of stress that's going on with it. It is, and uh, so we've, we've got the value of them both amendment going on. Uh, would have, I think at some point in time, we'll be in the chamber voting on our rules uh, for the next two years. So, uh, and I've got a number of other hearings that will be scheduled, a number of other bills that have been introduced, some of them from last year that never got above the line or set to the Senate. Uh, it's it's kind of hurry up but yet slow down. We've got th we've got to get things done, but because of COVID nineteen, the process is a little slower. Uh, in my committee room, we don't have any public coming into the Capitol. I have my twenty three members scattered all over the old Supreme Court room, and we're we're doing WebEx, which is uh, where people can appear uh, by video. Uh, when it works, it's great. When it doesn't work, it's frustrating. But that's basically been our week, dealing with WebEx and committee hearings, 
and now this uh, select investigative committee. So, uh, yeah, I've been busy. Yeah, yeah, you have. And speaking of being busy, while you and Dan came into the legislature at the seven, uh, same time, so you're, uh, see, this is your fifth term for each of yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's absolutely amazing. And I know from conversations with you that you said, man, it's going by like this. Can't believe we're on the fifth yep. time already. Yeah, it's fifth and, time. Uh, and there's an awful lot of work, and thank you for your time you put into it. We're going to cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Update. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host on uh, would be LSC. On the left side of your screen would be John Barker, and in between us is Dan Hawkins, representative from the 100th District and House Majority Leader. And Dan, thank you, as always, for coming and stopping in and um, sharing what's going on at the legislature. Thanks, Doug. It's always great to come. I, I always enjoy doing this with my uh, good friend, John. Yeah. And so... Fill us in. Where, you're one week into it or less, so yeah, it's a, how's it feel? You know, uh, John really said said it best when, you know, we've been here five days and it seems like we've been here a month. And for, for the leadership, uh, we really have been working on setting up the session clear back to the early December. Uh, and, and, and a lot of it just has to do with the fact that we've, we've got to keep people safe. So we've went through and changed really how our legislature, specifically the House, operates. Uh, and it's not been easy. Change is always difficult. You know how that goes for mm -hmm. people. Change is very difficult. But what we did, Doug, was, uh, we, as John said, we spread everybody out. We have 33 people in, on the floor on each side. Uh, so, um, so that area is basically we, we pulled out every other chair uh, to get people spread out. And then we had to move people up into our East Gallery, which be, would be to our back. Um, there, we've got 47 people setting up in the, the East Gallery and eight across the West Gallery behind the speaker stand. Uh, so we've got people all over the place. Um, did the same thing really in committees and it's been difficult because those committee rooms, some of them are fairly small, uh, to spread everybody out and have room for everything that needs to be done is difficult. So we literally had to move out all of the gallery chairs, so really there's no room uh, for the public to come in. Um, some of the stuff is being done in person right now, but I think as we get this WebEx perfected, and it's not perfected yet, we've had a lot of technical glitches, I think we will see um, that used more and more and probably people sitting in their offices joining on WebEx, unless it's a vote. A final action vote in committee is gonna have to be uh, looked at a little bit different. Um, you know, we have a constitutional requirement to be in Topeka and we have to have a quorum whenever we have a vote. And so, um, you know, we really have to keep everybody in the state house and, and, and that, you know, presents some problems. In addition, you know, we're having kind of a, a security alert right now. Um, and that's been a little bit difficult for us because uh, that's going to change some things this next week. Literally, the governor shut down the state house from this afternoon at 5 until next Friday. Nobody will be allowed in except for legislators and the staff. Um, and in addition, all of these things that we did for COVID to keep everybody safe so we can do the people's work, all of that I think will prove very well for us already in Missouri. Missouri started last Wednesday and we uh, received notice from them today that they're having to shut down all week next week uh, because too many COVID uh, cases have popped up on them, which is exactly what we're trying to keep from happening is, is literally keep everybody spread out, wear your mask, um, wash your hands a lot. And I really think that spread out is a big thing. Um, mask, you know, there's discussion whether the masks work or not. Uh, I, I, I don't know the science of that, but if it works and it helps, that's a good thing. And so we're really asking literally everybody there to wear a mask. And that's been problematic. A lot of people don't wear, wear that mask. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, you know, this last week, uh, the governor uh, gave her state of the state, um, she, as she does every year. But even this year, that's changed. She did it virtually. She did it uh, um from her office instead of having all 165 of us in one room. Uh, she did give her budget uh, uh, to us the very next day. Uh, the budget's um, a lot of smoke and mirrors. Um, she, she talks in generality. She doesn't really get specific 
in, in that way people don't get down on her on some of the things that she's going to have to do. But literally that budget has really three things that is going to be a, a problem for us. Uh, number one, she continues to want to, to expand Medicaid. Uh, and we know what the cost of Medicaid is. She says it's 19 million. It's not 19 million. It's much more than that. Uh, matter of fact, the 19 million is just for a half a year, six months, because of the way our budget cycle works. Um, so you, the, the total funds is about 500 million, uh, all funds, federal funds and state okay. funds. And so, so Medicaid expansion is out there. She's not going to stop on that. Um, she's going to re-amortize capers again. She's going to propose that. And re-amortizing capers is a, a non-starter. It has been for three years. For three years, she's pre this is her third year to present that. And I can guarantee you we will shoot that down again for good reason. Uh, John and I, when we got there, we started working on capers right away to, to get it back to solvent. And literally, it's, it, the, the process is working. We're, we're building uh, capers to, into a, a, a lot more solvent pension plan. This would literally free up some money for her by re-amortizing. Right. She'd re-amortize and add 10 more years to the amortization. Uh, it would free up somewhere around $150 million for her, but it would cost us $4.7 billion in debt. Uh, why would we do that? Uh, there is a time when we probably will want to do that, but it's after we've hit the peak and we're rolling down the other side of that mountain, um, probably somewhere around 10 years out or less of being finished, that's the time to re-amortize, not now. Yep. Uh, so she's also going to have to raise taxes. She's going to raise the, uh, uh, she, she's, she's decided to institute a tax on uh, digital downloads. That'd be Netflix, any streaming activity, music downloads, book downloads, all digital would be taxed. So she wants to raise taxes. Um, we call that the baby Yoda tax uh, for good reason. Uh, she's also going to have to move money around to make this all work. She's going to have to uh, uh, rob KDOT, the bank of KDOT. She'll have to take about $67 million from KDOT. And then we have PMIB money, which is some idle funds out there that we borrowed here uh, a year ago and we were supposed to start paying back. Uh, she wants to put that off for two years uh, after her next election. Uh, so that makes her look good and then she'll start paying it back. So there's a lot of things out there. Well, it sounds like it. We're gonna cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host, John Barker, and our special guest, Dan Hawkins, House Majority Leader from Wichita, 100th District. And um, thanks, for the, thanks for the update that you just shared with us. And now, John, what, what else have you got going in the legislature? Well, of course, you know, last year, uh, Prior to our adjourning, we had to make some emergency temporary fixes on how the government's going to run, especially the emergency management portion on it. And during the summer, the Speaker appointed a committee, to a joint committee of senators and House members, to, to look at how we could fix the emergency management, because it hadn't been changed since 1973, and it never anticipated a pandemic. So it was always you know, a tornado or a flood or a fire, something like that. So the pandemic brought some new things to us. Uh, we passed uh, in special session last year uh, an emergency, but most of those conditions that we put in that bill extended them to the 26th of January, uh, giving us time to come back the first of January. We thought, of course, COVID-19 may have gone away by then, uh, and it's not. So. Uh, on Tuesday, I introduced uh, uh, a bill that, for, last year it was 2016, House Bill 2016. This year it's, it's a new bill, but it's just to extend these emergency orders that we entered last year till March, latter part of March, so that it would give the uh, committee more time to methodically go through. But Dan, you know quite a bit about that too, so. Yeah, Kima, so. You know, the Kansas Emer Emergency Management Act is truly the act that the governor has used uh, to do everything she's done. So we have a, a an emergency disaster declaration, which she did, and then that kicks in the uh, Kansas Emergency Management Act, gives her a lot of power. And uh, some of that power was to close down businesses, stop businesses from operating, 
Uh, she did that original mask mandate. And then she just did a whole lot of executive orders. I think we're up somewhere around 90 executive orders now. And some of those were good. There were some of them that were very good. Uh, some of them weren't so good. Uh, we were totally against her shutting down businesses. And quite frankly, uh, we wouldn't have been in near as bad of fiscal uh, shape um, on our revenue if she wouldn't have shut down the businesses. And limiting church services. Absolutely, limiting church services. And it's just a big gamut of things that she did. Um, right now, the, the Senate has already passed their version to extend out till the end of March. Uh, so we will have time to fix to, to do all the fixes. You can't just do it in one bill. There's a lot of bills that are going to have to be done, and so it could be all the things from uh, motor carrier uh, loosening up uh, things for the motor carriers, people renewing their driver's license, renewing right. their tags, um, drive up uh, liquor, being able to get curbside liquor or, or curbside meals, but liquor really that that liquor piece was a big one to keep. Uh, the liquor store is going. Uh, so all, there were some really good things in there. And so just to shut down that system would be detrimental even today. Uh, so some of those things will be worked into uh, the, uh, all of the bills that come out for the Emergency Management Act uh, to straighten it out. And it even uh, we even uh, have them getting into what we call, what is that? Is that chapter 65? Yeah. Uh, chapter 65, where the um, uh, Secretary of KDHE has authority to quarantine people and the local health officers have that authority too. So we're going to be looking at all of that um, methodically to make sure we get it right. Uh, we don't want some of these things to ever happen again. And Doug, they, you know, the court system's involved in this. Well, they've suspended the speedy trial. Yes. Rule. Right. Uh, I know the Chief Justice has sent her representative on, the, on our interim committee. Uh, about extending certain uh, uh, authority to her. Uh, and so we're all real cautious, you know, the, at some point in time when you suspend the speedy trial rule, the federal courts are gonna get involved. Although our constitution doesn't say what speedy trial is. We did have legislation or statutory said this was the amount of days, 150 days. Mm -hmm. So if someone's confined, they must go to trial. So that's been suspended. Uh, I think we're getting back to where we're doing jury trials, and you'd know that better than me. Yeah, there some will be scheduled, it looks like, tentatively in March yeah. now. That would be a year. Yeah. A mm -hmm. year that no one, people that have been incarcerated have not been to trial. Yeah. So it's twice as long as what they normally we would do. Mm -hmm. So and that's one thing that's actually very important, John, is this the speedy trial situation. Right. We have. We have in uh, in Cedric County, which is a huge judicial district, uh, and I believe you told me this, over a hundred uh, people in jail on murder charges. And if we don't fix this at some point, they have to let them loose. Right. Federal court's going to get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've not yet, because they it's just not affecting Kansas, it's affecting the nationwide. But it is issues that we need to address, and as soon as possible. Uh, if not, uh, I can imagine some defense attorney going into federal court and some federal judge said, release them. And so, uh, but Dan's got a lot of other things on uh, on the on the bill that uh, you're interested in, I'm sure. Well, there are uh, Kima. Kima uh, also has uh, the APRN, uh, yeah. the nurse practitioner. Um, literally, that um, executive order that she did there allowed. Uh, the nurse practitioners to operate without a collaborative agreement right. with doctors, which that's a bill that I've been pushing since 2013. Exactly. Uh, so she did it through the executive order, but that's going to end. Now, John, on the other hand, has uh, is on a committee, the health committee, that's actually working on, on that issue and, and allowing it to become permanent law where APRNs can operate without a, a collaborative agreement. Right. And I got that out of committee, and then it got hijacked. It got the hijacked by Medicaid expansion. That's exactly. Yes, it, it took did. a really good bill and put a very bad bill. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is uh, we're going to cut away here and take a break, and when we come back, well, we'll have the final segment of uh, of this session. You're watching Legislative Updates. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the final segment of Legislative Updates, and I'm Doug Thompson with my co-host John Barker, and in between us is Dan Hawkins. House Majority Leader from the 100th District. 
and I appreciate you guys coming out. I know that it's been a long week. It's been a tough week. You hit the ground running, and it's mm -hmm. obvious that by, from the sides of the notebooks that you brought in, you got a lot of stuff that you're taking home, and thank you guys so much for, for what you do. Yeah. And uh, John, next week, who's, who's going to be our special uh, guest? Yeah, yeah, we're talking about the weekend. I brought 600 sheets of testimony from my hearing today, uh, and I was telling my committee, I said, your, your fellow members are out enjoying it. You've got to be sitting home reading 600 yeah. pages. Wow. But we do have Chris Croft. Chris was on here as a freshman. He is now chair of, of uh, redistricting committee, and that's going to be interesting how we design redistricts. All right. Very good. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Dan. You guys have a Thank safe you. trip on home. You've been watching Legislative Update.